check one, two. Am I coming through vocally? Good. good. Musicians always want to know. Am I coming through? Can you hear me? Can I get more of me in the monitor, please? All right. Hello. My name is Tim Buzza, and I am a educator and composer and father and husband and artist. Uh, and I did the music to the Wolf Quest games. Um, I've been working with Dave Schaller and Edge Webb for, I don't know, it's over 10 years, probably 15 maybe, I would think so. Um, we did all sorts of projects. This was the first big role-playing game where we needed a whole soundtrack to create this world and do the soundtrack. I was very excited to do it. Um, and with it being uh, kind of an organic game, we've done some others that were space or cleaning teeth or on a ship or some other cool spots, but this big, the expanse of Yellowstone, I knew that the acoustic guitar for sure was going to be the best, going to be the heart of this music. Um, and I'd been playing around with some different tunings and settled on one that uh, people who play a lot of guitar called Dad Gad. And Dad Gad stands for G, no, D A D G A D. So the secret to Dad Gad is everything sounds good. If you just strum the whole thing, it's fine. You start fiddling with just a couple notes. Harmonics all sound great. It's almost like you can't hit a wrong note. One of the things I enjoy about composition is that uh, composition is simply improvisation that's then written down. Like you are just noodling. I'm just playing around. Just playing around and then I hear something. Oh, I, I like that. Or what do I do with this? Well, that's nice. And then you decide on something. Okay, okay, I got something here. And you kind of make a mental note that, hey, okay, I like this. And then you work it and work it and work it. And the nice thing about having a studio right, right here, as soon as I have it, I just hit record. Two, three, four. whatever it turns out to be. And then if you like it, great. If not, uh, try it again. So when coming up with melodies, it's almost always just noodling, you're just playing around. You have to have some time for these things to come. You have to be able to sit around for a little bit and be relaxed. And then you just start noodling around and you go, oh, that slide is nice. And again, dad, gad, no wrong notes. So, a lot of my influences and background are um, hymns and church, old time melodies, just easy, easy pretty melodies is what I like a lot. And then both with hymn structure and pop structure, even old time structure, something needs to happen every four or eight bars. So once I get this down and I do it twice, And that was the second time and I know something else has to happen now oh yeah I'm just gonna walk something up and again dad get I'm just using one finger give it a little more drive take it up one more let something hang in the air 
something like that. If you want to sound like a much better guitar player than you actually are, I would suggest this dad gad. Again, for those kids listening at home, it's D, A, D, G, A, D, no, wrong notes. When coming up with the uh, main theme, we needed something a little, a little mean, a little tough, wolves are tough. Um, and so knew it had to be kind of in a minor key, um, not overly foreboding, but a little bit but tough and I think my I asked my brother to come over I said hey I need some help I need a bass I need a second opinion and I think it was as we were just again noodling around trying different stuff he went and I'm like okay that's cool do that again with that so I popped in the and added the few little harmonic pops um, so we came up with the and then you hit that again gotta say I love go the that's really fun to do um, so finisher like that but then um, how do you bring some beef to it uh, you put a big drum so using we, we did a combination of uh, MIDI drums on GarageBand GarageBand is the program I use it's easy it's fun for all three of these soundtracks imagined um, okay I've I've hired an ensemble to sit in a circle and write and improvise this stuff together um, when it's really just me and maybe my brother and our other friends. So we're trying to recreate this, the feeling of an ensemble, so even though only a couple of us play the four or five instruments that'll go into it. But the idea of, I'm gonna keep this soundtrack within the confines of this ensemble. What could this ensemble do? They're not a full orchestra, so we aren't, aren't gonna just suddenly add orchestra. We can do some things that feel big like an orchestra or really delicate or we can be a rock ensemble we can be um, special effects but all within this group as if we're just sitting here and we only have what we have around us to work with acoustic guitars an electric guitar drums harmonica whatever is we can grab um, that's what we use there that uh, or what are, yeah so that stuck around I'm glad we didn't keep the woo I think it was just kind of a placeholder for some sort of melody we were gonna put but weren't quite sure what what it was gonna be the fun part of writing music f for um, games is getting the feel just right the hardest one is to get the first piece that sticks. So I might, let's say I'm writing a, uh, a f for a game about monsters on an island that teach kids language. And I might send the first one and no, not quite it, and then a second go at it, and then that one, a third, fourth, fifth, and we might settle on the second or something like that. But getting the feel, getting the initial feel of the, the, what the music should be for the game is the hardest part. Once the feel is there, then I put my ensemble together and we can move forward within the parameters of that initial feel. Um, 
so we weren't too far off with that first one. I'm glad we yeah, I'm glad we took the vocals out. So to expand our sound palette and to fill out the soundtrack, make it a little more interesting than just the acoustic guitar, um, thought we'd add the electric. And um, instead of the dad gad tuning, I have this in a traditional tuning. Although I think I dropped this D. Yeah. Um, but this slide, piece of glass, blown just for it. Sometimes it's a cut off piece of a wine bottleneck or something like that, or um, metal. I like this glass slide. And um, it's not an exact copy of a wolf's howl, but it represents. So in that um, opening, there's a nice big fun slide. And then we used um, both the slide and also just uh, some bends that kind of have that slide effect, that same sort of ow, we're kind of trying to reproduce that as much as we could. It's a little, it's kind of bluesy. But it was mostly just to get that slide, both with the with the fingers on the bend and the each of these elements separately uh, can sound strange or uh, like they don't fit anywhere, and you put them all together, and then you get that ensemble. So the music for Slough Creek, well that, the, that whole adventure has more happening for your wolf. You know, you've got the puppy, you've got the, uh, the bear battle, and so um, expanding the moods in that soundtrack was fun and a challenge. Yeah, the, the, um, the pretty, the puppy stuff we talked about earlier. And then you've got uh, you know, bear attack, <laughs> all these sorts of crazy stuff. Um, and then you have that uh, the nights where you're journeying out after you've gotten your your family together and you're headed off to new territory. And it's um, again this pretty dad gad. We did the whole um, initial wolf quest in. Dad Gad, which is essentially the key of D and then B minor if you're working in the darker tones. And then um, we did uh, Slew Creek in, in D again. And it's just such a pleasant, pleasant, um, pleasant key. And then some nice electric work. Not so much the slide that time. It was not as howly. When you're off going across the prairie, you're not howling at the moon, so it was less about the sound of the wolf and more about the mood of the adventure. So with Slough Creek, I was uh, had started and gotten stuck, and nothing I played seemed to be satisfying to me. And so, you don't always, as a musician, you don't have to go it alone. You can call a buddy and say, hey, I'm stuck, will you come over and, and jam with me and play with me? So I called, um, you always want to call someone who's better than you are to do that sort of thing. Um, so I called um, my brother, and my good friend, Ben Woolman, who's a guitarist in town, jaw-dropping guitarist, I said, I need some ideas. 
Um, and he came over and here in the basement we played around. I showed him some clips of the, of the game in progress and talked about what the situation was. And he came up with some beautiful stuff and I was gonna, just with his permission, steal his ideas. And I was like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> You're crushing it right here and now. Let's just put the mic on you. Uh, and so he added some guitar on that soundtrack, kind of ghost, ghost writer guitar. It's my name of the soundtrack, but he wrote a couple of the pieces on there. I think in particularly um, the exploration theme initially. Uh, it's, yeah, he's good, he's really good. So if you're listening to the soundtrack and the guitar work is amazing, it's Ben Woolman. If it's just pretty good, it's me. But if it's jaw-dropping, it's Ben Woolman. Um, and then it's always nice to have my brother bring in his bass and his ideas. Um, it's fun to collaborate. It's really fun to collaborate. And your stuff turns out even better, often. One of my favorite collab collaborations of that piece uh, of Slew Creek was the, the bear attack. Because Ben is doing crazy stuff and I'm adding some crazy stuff on guitar. And then I got behind the drum kit and started to play around. It happens on this floor tom. And came together well I was that sounded like a bear attack I was frightened uh, so it was good one of my guitar heroes is uh, was a man named Michael Hedges who um, played New Age stuff who's on the Wyndham Hill label um, if you're as old as I am and remember New Age Wyndham Hill music in the mid and late 80s and early 90s and he was uh, killed in a car accident, but he redefined what you could do with the acoustic guitar. He made it, you know, sound like a whole new band. He would do one thing with this hand, and then like... When I was like, how, how was one person making all of that sound? Uh, and he was doing it with these neat alternative tunings. So I tried to channel some late Michael Hedges into the... Uh, Wolf Quest soundtrack with the that creek crossing where you just it's kind of a percussive almost as much as anything and you're not really strumming the strings you're as you can see I'm smacking them and it's picking up on these Harmonics. Harmonics are a, the halfway point, the quarter point, the third point on a string. So a string is this long in the middle. Here it is if I just hit it and it vibrates the whole length of the string. If I cut the string in half, then I get, it almost says I get, so if you had a jump rope, you were doing the jump rope, then you grab the jump rope in the middle and then two people swung it, you'd get two. Or you had two people do it and you'd get three. So you get, quarter, third, half. And it's this wonderful chime that if you put them together, or even if you get fancy and combine them up, um, but it's, you can also hit them and they'll ring. I was super excited to hear that there was going to be a Wolf Quest 2.7 uh, at Lost River, right? So I, can I do the soundtrack again? I asked Dave. Yes, I could. Awesome. Okay. So I was excited about it. 
and I knew um, that it was going to be cool. I heard it was in an, an abandoned city, so I had this this picture in my head, nighttime, but somehow the light still worked anyway, but nighttime and it's graffiti and I kind of worried that a zombie might come out any minute. Um, kind of mystery thing. So I thought, all right, this might need a whole new feel to it. So um, at first I thought piano, just it's a natural sounding instrument. Let's put the guitar down and put the slides away and the drums away and just do a piano soundtrack because it sounds so, can be sound very lonely. Uh, and uh, you can express a lot of emotion on piano. So I sent it to Dave and I was like, this is our new direction. I was psyched about it. I thought it was great. Uh, there were some drums, brought the drums in there, and maybe even some strings. Uh, and he's like, yeah, no, forget it. We have to do, let's stick with the traditional sound. It's not broken. I said, okay, okay. But I wanted to do something different. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do a new key. I'm going to take it from D and B minor to G and E minor. Well, especially with the abandoned city, it's gonna be more E minor. So nothing sounds more lonely than, than a harmonica over a minor chord. So you've got your E minor there, and then you've got your You think of the cowboy out on the prairie next to the fire and the lonely harmonica. Especially that wolf-like bend over that minor chord. I'm like that's lonely. Yeah. So I so I mocked something up and I sent it to Dave and he said, "Yeah, that's it. I love the harmonica." If you get too excited on a harmonica, I don't know if I'm going to blow any any mics or anything, but I don't even know if I can do it on purpose. If you get too excited on, you can get this. You hear that kind of almost a feedbacky. It's like the reeds in here can't take it anymore, and it makes this cool squeak, kind of like maybe an electric guitar gives a squeal if you get it too close to the amplifier, and sometimes it sounds perfect. There's, I should look it up. There's a piece in one of either the chase or the danger where this hits a fuzzy feedback and it's, I think it's a nice moment. It was an accident and you'd think if you were really trying to make a clean version, you'd pull it out of there, but I loved it. A fun place where we use this E minor and this half step up. This just says trouble, right? And so there's a, a bear attack, right? And so I thought, all right, bear attack. We need drums because it's going to be exciting. And then I thought, well, let's do the two characters in sound. So, as usual, the harmonica is playing the, this is the wolf. This represents the wolf. The, that was from Brain. It sounds in the context, it sounds better, more like breathing, but some breathe, some breathing, some breath. And then um, the they kind of howl, and then the bear is underneath in the guitar. Uh, so the growl. 
or the growl, the, the bear is meatier and bigger. So you got the lower notes representing its size. And then you got these mean sounding half steps in your minor key already. And um, you throw the bear in there and you throw the wolf in there and you get the drums that say action. And you got yourself a bear fight is what you do.